Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship you have given to us. Thank you for making it possible for us to come together this evening, to worship you, to sing praises to you, how wonderful you are, how amazing your grace is, how higher is your name, name above all names. And you have been protecting us under your holy name, keeping us under your holy wings. It's all because of your message. You have been so great. Uh, gracious and compassionate towards us. We are so grateful to you, Lord. We want to give you thanks and praise you this day as we brought us together again to the throne of grace that we may offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving unto you and that we may allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us today that they will speak to us something special to our hearts, to our lives for our practical day-to-day -day life that we may practice. That we may prepare ourselves for the tests that we have prepared for us. And that as our life is tested, that we may come out refined and purified and a lot strong in our faith and growing in the faith and in our character. And we pray that your Holy Spirit will teach us some beautiful principles today. And that we may be able to understand and apply to our lives and may be able to pass on to others. We come at this meeting into our hands that you bless each one of us in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to this seminar today on the 10 tests every Christian must face. This is something special that we are going to have a series of seminars on this so that each Sunday we will talk about one test in detail. And I want to show you some beautiful slides with scriptures and points and that you can look at and note down if possible, so that it will help you to understand clearly the principles involved uh, in different tests. Uh, the 10 tests every Christian must uh, face. This is something very special subject that is very, very useful today, and that God has uh, put tests for each one of us. Uh, can you imagine a school or college without any tests? Uh, but you cannot imagine, because the tests themselves are to enhance our, our life, uh, to promote our lives, to further uh, progression and for advancing our life. So tests are a blessing in one way. Uh, without tests, you do not know your progress. You do not know how you are doing. You do not know how you will be promoted and where you are in your life. And God, God has uh, put some tests in the scriptures and we will have enough examples to help us understand about the 10 tests every Christian uh, must uh, face. I want to give you in the beginning some overview of uh, what tests are, and then I will take you to the uh, first test today. And uh, what the Bible says about the tests, uh, we will look into Deuteronomy chapter 8. A few verses I want to read for you. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. Let me push the, this one photos, uh, the other side. Uh, this should not be chapter 8, verse 2. Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for 40 years, humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you will really obey his commands. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3. Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with uh, manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that uh, people need more than bread for their life, Real life comes by feeding and every word of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 16. He fed you with manna in the wilderness, a food unknown to your ancestors. He did this to humble you and test you for your own good. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 7, 17. He did it so you would never Think that it was your own strength and energy that made you worthy. And uh, we will bring out some principles from this scripture, what is about 
attend tests every Christian master uh, face. Uh, first of all, we see what is the difference of a test uh, from uh, a temptation. A test from temptation. What is the difference? How do you differentiate a, a test and a testing and temptation? Uh, we see in the scriptures about the test and temptations. Uh, both come to believers. Uh, a test means through which the genuineness of faith is proved and Christian character is developed. God promises to help his people during times of testing. He goes on to say that God allows his people to pass through certain experiences so that uh, he may see and prove to them that their faith in him is genuine. So uh, testing is to test our faith, to prove that our faith is sincere, real, and genuine. So the test is coming from God. He wants to test our faith. Test comes for to believers. Now this is sent by God. We see in First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 17, he says, I know my God that you test the hearts of man and you have pleasure in uprightness. And so the tests are sent by God. God himself tests his own people and to separate wheat from chaff. And so as we see the, the, the sifting, uh, sifting of wheat, that you want to separate wheat from the chaff so that uh, you will get the real seed. And so what is the real thing in our lives? God wants to prove. And that's how he sends tests in our lives to refine your faith. In First Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, we see that God sends the test in our lives to refine our faith. Uh, our faith, uh, like gold, is refined in the fear we trials. And uh, that's what the Bible says. So the tests are sent to refine our faith and to develop or grow our character. In James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, we read uh, that God sends tests and trials into believers' lives to develop their character and to grow their character. And... Uh, God makes several promises concerning our testing. Sometimes the tests may not be very easy to face. Sometimes the tests may be very challenging and difficult. But God promises us uh, uh, several things, especially three important uh, encouraging promises we have in the scriptures. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 9, The Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials. The Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trial. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 9. So the Lord himself will come to rescue his people from tests and trials that they go through in life. And Luke chapter 22 verse 32 the Lord Jesus said, I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail to Peter. The Lord said to Simon Peter that the Satan has desired to sift you like weeds and I prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And so we see how the Lord is praying for his people when, when his people go through uh, trials and tests in their life. So the Lord is backing up our tests and trials with his own prayer. Sometimes we depend upon other people's prayers, we desire. But then the Lord is praying for us. This is a very encouraging thing, that the Lord allowed Satan to tempt to test Peter's faith, but at the same time, the Lord, the Lord is the Lord is the Lord of his, his prayer. And he said that your, your faith may not fail. I think you have to mute uh, the mics. Some of you, the noise is coming. Uh, and thirdly, consider it a great joy, my brothers and sisters, uh, whenever you experience various trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, uh, lacking nothing. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. So here we read an encouraging scripture. He says that it is don't you take great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials. 
because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete lacking nothing. So James encourages that we need to rejoice in our testing and trials because our character is being built up and developed and that we grow in our spiritual life and we become mature and complete, lacking nothing. And now what is temptation? Now temptation is like an invitation to commit sin. So temptation itself is not sin. Temptation is the pressure to give into ungodly influences that lead you away from God and into sin. It is not a sin to be tempted. It is the succumbing to the temptation that causes us to sin. So temptation is an invitation to sin. The temptation itself is not sin. But when you yield to the temptation, when you say yes to the temptation and you go ahead to commit sin. So when temptation comes, you have the option of resisting the temptation, saying no to the temptation. Then you overcome it. You become victorious. You will, you will, you will no, no need to commit sin. But then when you yield to the temptation, you commit sin. So temptation comes to everyone at different levels in their spiritual life. Depending upon your faith, depending upon your spiritual maturity, you will face different level of temptation. So sources of temptation is temptation comes from all kinds of places. Though today's topic is not about temptations at all, but I am just giving an overview introduction about these two, temptation and uh, a test. Uh, so, but we must keep in mind that uh, though temptation comes from all kinds of places, but not from God. God never tempts us with evil. This is very important. In James chapter 1, verse 13, we read, No one undergoing a trial should say, I am being tempted by God. Since God is not tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. Because God is so holy and righteous, uh, is sinless, is perfect, he does not tempt anyone with evil to commit sin. He allows uh, uh, different sources to tempt his people uh, to make them strong. Like the Lord Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tempted. So uh, he was led into the wilderness for test and trial. So he was led into the wilderness for temptation. But God himself does not take initiative to tempt anyone. See, the te temptation may come from Satan or from your own sinful nature, as James says uh, later on in chapter 1. Uh, other places are uh, from other people, are from the world, are from Satan himself. So temptations may come from different sources, but not from God. This is... a. Uh, very important. Uh, we wonder why the test uh, when we try to do our best. We ask why? Why is this happening to me? It is asked when bad things happen to good people. It is asked when great effort produces only poor results. It is asked when the expected success is delayed. It is asked when the wicked prosper while the righteous struggle. And we wonder why the test uh, when we try to do our best. See, nobody wants to go through the test, especially students who are not well prepared for the examination. They don't want to have any test. Right? It will be full of tension for them when they want to go for the test school. Similarly, in our spiritual life, uh, we often do not like to be tested. Even some people do not like to be asked any questions about their faith. And, but that is not true. That's not right, because tests are so important in our life, we are going to see now. People tend to deal with difficulties better if they understand that what they endure serves a good purpose. People tend to deal with difficulties better if they understand that what they endure serves a purpose. And knowing that the trials of their faith are not pointless, make the enduring bearable. So when you know that the tests and trials coming into your life have a purpose, and they are serving something good in your life, they are putting you some good results, then your tests and trials become 
appear about. And that is what we see about the test. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, we read, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his uh, purpose for them. So God has a purpose in calling his people who love him. And so he makes all things to work together. He makes everything to work together for their good. So when we face tests and trials, God has a purpose in them. And we need to understand that. The purpose of every test is to reveal what we understand, to reveal what we don't understand, to reveal to us the applicability of the lesson. So the purpose of every test in our life is to reveal what we understand and uh, to reveal what we don't understand, to reveal to us the applicability of the lesson. And this is what happens in the schools. What we have understood, the teacher has taught us so long and the test will reveal. And what we did not understand, what we failed to write in the exam, that shows that we did not understand. And also the applicability of the lesson. And uh, this is what the purpose of every test is. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 12, verse 35, A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. So the test will bring out of our life what is in our heart, whether we have stored good things or evil things in our heart, whether the, uh, the, the treasure of our heart is filled with good or evil, and the testing will bring out. So the testing is inevitable. Testing is continual. You cannot say that test is uh, uh, once we have failed the test that is enough. No, test is continual. It's a lifelong. Yeah, and test is inevitable. Everybody has to face the test. We see right from the book of Genesis, uh, uh, we see how the patriarchs and the, and the saints of the Old Testament, kings and slaves, everybody faced uh, some sort of test in their lives. Right in the New Testament, apostles face the tests. Right, all believers even today are facing different tests in their lives. So tests are continual, lifelong. We will have tests always in our lives, and tests are necessary for us. As I mentioned in the beginning, tests are measuring our progress, help us to advance in our spiritual life. They build our character. They help us to grow in our faith. And tests are productive. So when you go through a test, all right, something comes out of your life. Uh, you see the promotion. You see the advancement in your life. So they are productive. They are influential. Tests will impact our life a lot. They influence our lives a lot. And uh, tests are crafted by God. It is God who plans what kind of test has to be sent into our lives. Uh, based on the measurement of our faith, of our, of our spiritual maturity, and so the test I face will not be the same as you face. The test you face will not be the same as your friend faces or your other family member faces. So we each one have different tests crafted by God. And this is what we need to understand about the test. And also the dangers of testing. What are the dangers of testing? People become disillusioned. Now when you face a test, you become disillusioned. Oh, what is happening to me? Right, uh, you become very disappointed in life, discouraged. People become distraught, all right, and uh, people become distracted. They, they, they lose focus of their life sometimes. The test will distract their, uh, divert their attention to other things. People become angry, you know, they become angry with God, with others, because of the tests they are going through in their lives, because of the trials that come in their lives. And people can become bitter also. There are people who are so bitter against God and themselves and others because of the tests and trials uh, they are put to. Uh, people can become hardened. Some people become hardened in their hearts because of the tests they have gone through in their lives. They say, you do not know what kind of tests I have gone through in my life, what kind of trials I have experienced. And they become hardened in their hearts. You know, these are the dangers of the testing. So it is important for us to know the tests beforehand so that we will know how to respond to them and experience the blessings that God has planned 
uh, when he crafts the test for each of us. As I said, we each of us will face different tests in our lives, and we need to prepare ourselves how to face the test and uh, uh, come out victoriously. Now, the, uh, I, as I said, there are 10 tests every Christian must face, and today we want to deal with the first test. That is called the wilderness test. This is called the wilderness test. We often discuss about this with other leaders, that everyone God wants to use have to go through the wilderness test. We see in the Bible uh, that everybody God used have gone through the wilderness. So before God can use you, he will allow you to go through wilderness. And then he will bring out the best from you. And uh, he, will allow you, he will allow you to learn in the wilderness. And he will test your faith in the wilderness. He will test your uh, potential in the wilderness. And then he will equip you to be well prepared for his purpose. We see, for example, how God used Moses only after he went into the wilderness after 40 years. God called him back again to, to Egypt. When he was in Egypt, when he was growing in the Pharaoh's uh, palace, God did not use Moses. Though God, though Moses wanted to do something, but God did not use Moses uh, in any way. Only after Moses went into wilderness, God called him from the wilderness, and then God used Moses. And that's how we see that. And like that, you follow each leader that God used in the biblical times. We see how they were sent into wilderness before God could use them. What is the wilderness test? The word wilderness is defined as a desert place, a place un uncultivated or lived in, a state of disorder. So this is what a wilderness is. Wilderness says are uh, places of difficulties, uh, pressures, insufficient resources, uh, positions. One of the questions most asked in church is uh, why? So that is what is the wilderness. So wilderness speaks about uh, the difficulties we face in our lives, about the pressures we undergo, insufficient resources we have, our oppositions we face from others. One of the questions uh, most asked in the church, why? Often we ask the question, why God? Why this is happening to me? Why God? So this is what is known as a wilderness test. Uh, we see again in the scriptures about uh, the wilderness. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2. Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for 40 years, humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether you will really obey his commands. Now we see this is the basis of the wilderness test. Now we go through the scriptures uh, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, uh, several scriptures, what this teaches about the wilderness test. And we bring out the principles from these scriptures and apply to our lives today. That we analyze what is wilderness test and uh, and how it comes into our lives today. Now we see uh, why the wilderness test came to Israel people at the time. After they left Egypt, God did not take them directly into the promised land, but he led them into the wilderness. For 40 years, they were traveling in the wilderness. And we see what was God's purpose for that. We read now in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Very clearly, Moses uh, uh, tells them about uh, God's plan in leading them uh, to the wilderness. What God had in his mind, uh, why the wilderness test? To humble you. God said to humble you. They were led into the wilderness to humble them. You know, often in our lives, the pride is what is destroying many people's lives. Uh, the boastful attitude many people have. And uh, unless God humbles us, uh, there is no mercy we experience. And we will perish in our own pride. God humbles us. And so God takes us through the wilderness to humble us. He will not forcibly humble us, but he will make a way for us to become humble. The Bible says that humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due season. God wants to exalt us, but only after we humble ourselves. 
if god has to force us to humble ourselves and that become judgment all right that will be very hard on our lives it will be very harsh for us so god allows us to humble ourselves and that's how he takes us to wilderness experiences to humble us and to prove your character as we have seen the test through our character they bring out what is in our hearts all right our character is developed uh, through the test and so the wilderness test so it proves our character uh, to teach you that you need more than bread we read in the passages in chapter 8 of Deuteronomy that to prove that you need more than bread god was giving them daily manna though they were not happy with that but god wanted to teach them that you need more than bread for your daily life you need the word of god so we we god does not want us to be more attached to the worldly things so much we depend upon the worldly things which are temporary which are perishable god wants us to depend upon him uh, the uh, the living bread and so we see to discipline us for maturity or self control in order to discipline us god takes us through the wilderness and to uh, and to make us to experience self control to have self control god allows us to go through wilderness to reveal to us that it was not our own strength that made us prosper and often we think about our own potential our own abilities our own capabilities our own credentials all right uh, that we were able to achieve things in life we credit give credit to our own selves uh, but then god takes us through wilderness test so that uh, to reveal to us that it was not our own strength that made us prosper it is god who gives us prosperity it is god who gives us success it is god who gives us strength to do everything in our lives no this is the purpose of the wilderness test that we read in the in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 i god led israel people to the wilderness for 40 years very clearly god said about this uh, we see that uh, yes he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with a uh, food previously unknown to you and your ancestors he did it to teach you that people need more than bread for their life real life comes by feeding on the on the law word of the lord he fed you with manna in the wilderness a food unknown to your ancestors uh, to uh, this to by this to humble you and test you for your own good he did it so you would never think that it was your own strength and energy that made you well the indeterminate chapter it was so much here and we see how uh, why this wilderness test was done uh, now the test occurs so that we would not forget god why the wilderness test occurs so that we would not forget god so that we would learn to trust god so that our faith in god would grow stronger so that we would have a platform from which we could minister to those who are around us so it is a training place wilderness is a training ground where we will be equipped and prepared and that we may be able to minister to others and often people think that the training place is the bible college or seminary where we have comfortable seating and uh, you know good food uh, time to time and uh, various other you know activities uh, to make you happy you know uh, that is not how it is because once you are in the bible college or seminary for three four years you become so comfortable you do not want to do anything uh, to cause trouble to you when you come out of it and uh, that's why dr billy graham said once that when people come out of the seminary uh, right they lose the gospel and another man of god dr g d james said that today seminaries have become cemeteries uh, because once they come out of it they lose the gospel they have no gospel to preach they look for survival they look for their own comfortable life somewhere all right and so this is what happens but that is not how god trains us usually 
You see how the Lord Jesus trained his uh, disciples. He took them along with him everywhere, walking, walking around, and let them see all that he was doing and saying. And so it was something hands-on training, all right? He did not have a class for them, making them to sit in Jerusalem uh, in a training center, or uh, in a synagogue, and continuously train them there. No, okay. he took them along with him to different places. And that's how we train them. So God takes us through the wilderness so that we would have a platform from which we could minister to those who are around us. It's like a training place. Only two men were promoted to becoming a king without a struggle of the wilderness. Almost all people in the Bible, all the leaders, all the people God used were taken through the wilderness. But there are two people who have actually kingship without going through wilderness. Uh, that they were King Saul, who was consumed by his own jealousy against David and perished the battle. King Saul never went through the wilderness experience. And King Solomon also never went through the wilderness experience in his life. And he was consumed by his own passion and perished. You see, they both lost their original uh, calling, original uh, mission God has called them. Uh, because they never went through the wilderness experience in their lives. The rest of all people went through wilderness experience uh, and they have been uh, prepared by God uh, for the purpose he had called them. Uh, while the testing is universal, how we respond is left up to our personal inclinations. So when the testing is universal, that means we are all will be tested in our lives at one or the other day. But uh, how we respond is left to us, uh, to our own personal inclinations. Now, how God tests us? How does he test us? In what way? We have seen in Deuteronomy chapter 8 in the scriptures, uh, he allows us to lack. There will be something lacking in our lives. Uh, that is a test from God. He wants to see how we respond, how we react to what is lacking in our lives. Some people panic. Some people become anxious, worried. They grumble. They complain. Right? And they blame God that they don't have this, they don't have that. So God wants to see how we respond to what is lacking in our life. So he allows us to lack. He supplies our need in a manner in which we are not familiar. For example, Eliza, God supplied his need in the time of famine, sending him to a widow and also sending the bread and meat daily through a crowd. So it's, you know, something that's not familiar. So he supplies our need in a manner in which we were not familiar. Unfamiliar methods God uses. It happened to me in the beginning of the ministry in Mumbai in 1985. Uh, I just go out in the morning to preach the gospel with people whom all I meet on the road. I had no meals to eat and I had no food because I had no money with me. But very strangely, God provided. Very strangely, God provided for my daily needs. And I've written it in my testimony book uh, called His Grace So Amazing. So amazingly, God provided. And we cannot really imagine how God provides for his people's needs. And we have the beautiful example in the life of Eliza. Similarly, even today, God is working. Uh, same God we have today and who is supplying to meet our needs uh, in ways that are not familiar to us. Sometimes we look the other way to provide for us, but God has other ways to provide for us. And he allows us to be dependent. He allows us to be dependent. God wants us to depend, depend upon him for all our needs. And that's how he brings tests into our lives where we become dependent upon him rather than depending upon ourselves, our abilities, our riches, our knowledge, or on other people's help. That we will become dependent on God himself. And that's how the tests will be like that. He allows us to be stressed. We feel very much stressed and anxious about things happening in our lives. We feel stressed. And that, that's how God allows us to be stressed. He allows us to suffer pain. We see the case of Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 
that God put a thorn in his flesh. Apostle Paul says, God set an angel uh, the, uh, with a thorn in my flesh to buffet me, to cast pain. And he prayed for it three times to be delivered, that the pain should go away, that the thorn should be renamed, removed. Imagine the thorn constantly pricking him, but yet he was to do the ministry, continue the life as usual. And Apostle Paul said that God said, my grace is sufficient for you. And my strength is made perfect in weakness. He did not remove the thorn from his body. He still had the pain. But then in the midst of pain, Paul could experience the sufficiency of God's grace. So God allows us to suffer pain in our lives so that we could feel the sufficiency of God's grace in our lives, in our weaknesses, that we may find God's strength. God is more interested in our character than he is uh, our comfort. Now, why God allows all these tests to happen in our lives, all these things to happen in our lives? Because God is more interested in our character, to build our character than to make us comfortable. Today, most of the people are praying and the preachers are offering comforts to people. Prosperity, richness, and wealth and health, uh, most of the preachers are offering to people to make them comfortable. Even to sinners living in sin, rather than offering salvation, forgiveness, and calling for repentance. God is more concerned about our character, that he wants us to repent. That's why in Acts chapter 17, verse 30, we read that God commands all people everywhere to repent, to turn away from their sins because... He has appointed a day to judge all men. You see, that's how we see God is commanding all everywhere to repent, to turn away from sin unto him, and to trust in the Lord Jesus for salvation, so that God could build up their lives, transform them into his son's likeness. So God is more interested in our character than in our comfort. We look for comfort of life, but God wants to build our character and to make us like Christ's life. Now, this is very important. So every test that God sends into our life is geared to that goal that we become Christ-like, that we are transformed to become Christ-like, that our character is formed and developed uh, like the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is how God is more interested in our character. We must keep this in mind than our comfort. Man cannot see his weaknesses until circumstances uh, reveal. No, man cannot see his weaknesses until circumstances reveal. Now, impatience is revealed when something uh, hinders our progress. How do we know that we are impatient? When something hinders our progress, we become impatient. Pride is revealed when we are forced to do something menial. Now, if somebody tells you to do something menial, then your pride comes out. Oh, why should I do that? I am so and so. So the pride comes out. Uh, your pride is revealed when you are forced to do something menial. Stubbornness is revealed when we are forced to do something that uh, we don't desire. Right? When we are forced to do something that we don't like, the stubbornness is revealed, that we don't want to move. Our lack of faith is revealed when we are required to do more than uh, what we are able. Our lack of faith is revealed when we are required to do more than what we are able. So when you are told to do something which you cannot, which you are not able to do, whether you have faith to do, will be revealed. Idolatry is revealed when we are required to sacrifice those things that matter to us. Idolatry is something that replaces God, that you love something more than God. It's not necessarily an idol that you keep in front of you. Whatever you love more than God is an idol. So when you are required to sacrifice those things that matter to you more, that uh, you see an idol in your heart. Immaturity is revealed when we can't have our way. You know, how do you know you are immature? 
uh, when you know you can't have your own way. Self-will is revealed when we are required to do something against our ambitions. Self-will is revealed when we are required to do something against our ambitions. You have some ambition, all right? You have your own will to be done, but how do you know that? And, uh, and that's how self-will is revealed when we are required to do something against uh, your ambition. Self-centeredness is revealed when we are forced to serve others. When you are asked to serve others, uh, it will bring out your self-centeredness. That you don't want to serve others, but you want others to serve you. That weakness comes out at the time. So different weaknesses are coming out under the circumstances, all right, that will that bring out those weaknesses. And this is how God brings such situations in our lives, puts us in some such circumstances that will bring out our weaknesses, so that we will be strengthened in those weaknesses. If you do not know where you are weak, how can you strengthen yourself? You continue to live as if you are okay. But God will bring such situation in your life to bring out your weaknesses so that you will be strengthened by God himself, that you will ask God to strengthen you in those weaknesses. Blessings of the wilderness test. So what are the blessings uh, we experience uh, uh, due to the wilderness test. We see the supernatural work of God. We see the supernatural work of God. We see how God led the people of Israel 40 years. You know, their clothes were not worn out, all right? Their shoes were not worn out, all right? Whatever they had when they were in Egypt, uh, they continued to use them for 40 years. You imagine, that's the supernatural work of God. He provided for all their needs. They neither served nor reaped anything. They did no work in the travels, but God took care of them. The supernatural work of God, uh, they were able to see in the wilderness. We receive assurance of the care of God. God assured them of taking care of them during their travel in the wilderness. In the wilderness test, we receive assurance of the care of God. In the beginning, when I was going through severe difficulty, challenges, even not even having a single meal a day and not even having a 50 paisa coin in my pocket, I could survive, all right? I had the peace of God that God assured me he would take care of me somehow. One day I was sitting in the YMCA hostel in Mumbai in 1986 and I had absolutely nothing with me. I just asked, said to God, Lord, how are you going to bring me out of this situation? I have nothing with me now. Not a single paisa with me, no meal, nothing. How am I going to survive in the city? How are you going to bring me out of this? Because I don't tell anyone. Nobody knows my situation. You see how God assured me that time of his caring, that he was able to care for me all the time. And I am here after 35 years. All right. Without those in the beginning, without food, money, I see God made me to survive with his assurance, with his provision. And wonderfully he provided in different ways. So I cannot imagine now. But then he gave me the joy of serving him. And uh, that assurance that God is always there to take care of us in our needs as we depend upon him. And so in the wilderness test, we receive assurance of the care of God we receive assurance of the power of God. In the wilderness test, we receive the assurance of the power of God. It was God's power that kept Israel people going all the way to the wilderness, to the promised land. They had no power. It was God's power that took them all over, gave them victory over the enemies, all right? So in the wilderness test, God assures us of the power. We receive assurance of the faithfulness of God. God who brought the people of Israel out of Egypt, he kept his faithfulness. He said that I'm going to take you to the promised land. Even after 40 years, even though they rebelled against him, many people died. Even the generation that came out of Egypt died. Yet God's faithfulness remained with them and he carried them to the promised land. So in the wilderness test, we receive the assurance of 
the faithfulness of God. In the sense, through our difficulty, through the pressures, through the lack of things, and through uh, various challenges in our lives, in the wilderness, uh, we will have the faithfulness of God guarding our lives. That we can depend upon God's faithfulness. He is always faithful to his promises. We are transformed by a renewing of our minds. In the wilderness test, our minds are renewed. And so that our lives are transformed. As in Romans chapter 12, Apostle Paul says, be transformed by the renewing of your minds. And that happens in the wilderness test. When we are going through different tests in our lives, tests and trials, our minds will be renewed. We can see God more closely and we experience his grace and power in our lives and our lives will be transformed. So we are transformed by a renewing God our minds. We will become mature Christians. Uh, due to the wilderness test, the blessing is that we become mature. Many Christians are not maturing today. They are still like babies because they do not want to face any test in their life. The moment they see a, a little test coming into their life, they start grumbling, complaining. They start worrying. They give up on God. They don't want to go through any test. So they still remain like babies, all the time crying in prayers, all the time asking God, do this, do that. They do not want to go through any wilderness experience. We will develop the ability to endure. Now, when you go through wilderness test, you will develop the ability to endure. We will lack in nothing. And that's how God said, see, during your 40 years of travel, did you lack anything? God provided them with heavenly manna and meat abundantly. Uh, we see that they lacked nothing during their wilderness journey. God is there to take care of them. And uh, as God was there with them, today God is with us to take care of us. So we will lack in nothing. All right. So during the wilderness test, we will understand that God is able to supply to meet all our needs according to his riches and glory. As Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, he, he wrote the statement from Roman jail. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is what happens in our wilderness test. We will not lack in nothing. James chapter 1 verse 2. Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you encounter various trials. James chapter 1 verse 3. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patient endurance, but uh, uh, be letting that patient endurance have a perfect work, our full effect, so that you shall be perfect, our nature, and complete, lacking in nothing. Our effectiveness and successes depend upon our responses to the various trials or testings. How do you want to respond? Now, our effectiveness and successes depend upon our responses to the various trials or testings. So, uh, as we have seen, all of us will go through one or the other test in our lives, but how do you respond? Now, we can use the prayer, we can use the word of God, we can use the counsel of others to encourage us to go through any sort of test God will bring into our lives. Because there are blessings prepared for us when you go through wilderness test. May God bless each of us. May God encourage you when you go through wilderness test. And you can feel free to contact me, share any prayer points for counseling or prayers anytime using my WhatsApp number. Or you can use my cell number to call anytime for encouragement or prayer. So seek God's grace and uh, encouragement in prayer yourself, as well as in the word of God and counsel of other believers. When you go through the wilderness test and our other tests, we will continue with the 10 tests every Christian must face in the coming Sundays. So we will have one Wednesday Bible study on Ephesians. You are all welcome. Also invite other, uh, your friends, your family, people. God bless you. Let us pray.
Father, we thank you for speaking to us today about the wilderness test and the various tests that we go through and the blessings and the purpose of tests, the Lord. And as your word says to encourage us that we need to rejoice when we go through various sorts of trials because they build our character and they develop our spiritual life and bring us to maturity, completeness in our faith. Lord, we thank and praise you for these wonderful truths you have revealed to us in the wilderness test of Israel people that we have taken them through wilderness for 40 years and you have taken care of them in every way and that we have seen in the scriptures. Today you are with us, the same God, that when we go through the wilderness test in our lives, that we may be encouraged. As you have given us the assurance of your power and presence and your provisions, Lord, and that we may be encouraged to go through and to experience all the blessings you have prepared for us in the wilderness test. I pray for every brother and sister in this meeting that you bless them. May your joy and peace and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us till we meet again in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.